Fantastic job just with that early baseboard. Yeah, absolutely. Eggs are creation, they will back their way out as we see Albert give it have fun. Downy runes will go either way as it seems to be a two for two trade anyway. Everyone's having a, a very good time here. I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but something is. Just how our crowds are, Mike. We're a lively <laughs> bunch. You know, it's, it's a rambulan. You, you get the spirits up, you look for some action. Even when there's nothing happening, you want to cheer for it. Well, speaking of nothing happening, the mid lane, we've got a Dragonite, Jonathan, so it's sure to be nothing happening in this lane against the Pangolier. A very boring lane indeed. Anything to keep an eye on here between Bob and Arbit? Nah, it's going to be an easy time for Arbit. It's just breed fire. You've got the regen. Bob can't really do as much. It costs him more mana to try to trade back, and you're already seeing that. Really good poke coming up from Abed with just that first breed fire. Yeah. And I don't expect this to get any easier. It's sustainable for the Tango, but it's definitely DK favorite and as is most melee matchups and really most matchups in general for DK right now. Yeah, you're looking at bottom lane as well. Tino and Shanks going at it against Carlo and Raven. Of course, Raven is looking at it some very, very safe CS. Tino is going to be very annoying here on the Wyvern though, especially as the levels go up. That Arctic burn does start to really kick away at the HP period. Of course, Shanks could look to set up a nice cross that line combination with Carlo. He does find an opportunity. But now, of course, the Black is going to be down. He's going to find down at this bottom line. He just wants the farm. Yeah, and they're, they're going to be able to find that farm for the most part. There is some good poke coming out from the Winter Wyvern, but the downtime of his Arc Burn is pretty high in the initial level, so you'll always have a window to play with. Once the Alchemist is at a certain level, you might get enough speed to throw it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> early lead build up by Abbott. Even with the six minute rune, that would be a very distinct possibility for Blackfish for how that bot lane should end up. Back to that mid lane, Abbott's obviously having a very good time. Got the hand up. Dyer's got the hand up, he's looking much out of this as Carlo, trying to find the courier of bot. That is, that is awful, his bottle is gone. Oh Again, coming boy. back from that radiant base war. Just free fight, free, free zero <laughs> minutes start. War really on, Carlos just making it pay dividends. They crept the smoke, they got the courier's on the bottle. Now the mid lane for Bob is washed and it just gets tougher and tougher. Oh yeah, that's terrible. There's no bottle this early on as the Pangolin. Like the, the DK matchup was hard enough. Now he's got no play out of this. His armor is just going to slowly chip away at his HP pool. And you see Arvid, he could not kill this guy. He just wants to see Gabby going to go for a charge. CML, he's going to be the target. CML on the T1 tower. But they're diving right in. They will not go all the way though. Gabby looking to back his way out. CML would not feed away first blood quite yet. Yeah, playing cautiously, really good use of juggling around aggro, tossing in those illusions for us just to pop it while we get that five on. That is the one thing with the Lina lane. It can be a little bit more passive with something like the Marcy. Marcy support feels like it needs to be level three to really feel effective. Even then, oh, Yona. Yona, he is trapped between a rock and a hard place. Charges out. They're trying to body block up. The TPs are incoming. Yona! Oh. He'll walk away from Carlo. now. Carlo now the one in trouble. Carlo's gone. Oh, what a turnaround execration. I was not quite expecting that. That's exactly what they need to do, right? Have the confidence to just TP in when you see that MP commit. Really good jump from CML. You just get a, basically a two-man stun with that weird blocking from the trees, just not cutting it here for the side of Blacklist and Execration. They find something to be really happy about. Even the mid lane, you're talking about Bob not having the best of times. He is actually not too far behind on Abed. A lot of it denies for Abed, but in terms of CS, ah! 16 is going to go down. Nice pick up here by Blacklist Rivalry. Shanks making his way back down towards the bottom lane, but could not quite get there in time to help out. So Tino to beat his life away, and Blacklist, I'm sure they'll be very, very happy with that pick up. Yep, that, that's a much bigger kill for the side of Blacklist to find. It does set back the Winter Wyvern a fair bit, and just feeding onto the enemies can be a little bit of an issue. Again, not the strongest laning start here for Raven, but you get enough space out of the Owl, and once you can hit that jungle, it starts to feel oppressive. You have to respect the levels on Tino and Shanks. The burst damage can be ready to go. And it's really on Blacklist to try to play around that pseudo-global strat, right? Like you talked about with the panel. It's about the teleportation. It's about to charge. Let's try to teleport again up top. 
Yeah. And they will, Carla is going to leave the area up towards the top. They may go on to Yona. Yona still surviving a little bit longer, but is gone. Blacklist rivalry, a very, very nice kill as they'll go after CML to boot. CML still going for a bit of a run. Carlo and Tim just keeping up the vision, but they've got no charge available on Gabby, so he had no way to close the gap. The CML does get out, but Yona going down in that lean, that's a huge deal once again for Blacklist. Yeah. Again, they're just utilizing that teleportation, knowing when it's down for the side of Execute. He'd hate to die a second time, Yona. He just TP back. He's going to try and go after Carlo. Carlo's got help around him if he needs it. CML's going to jump in. Gabby, though, he's going to charge right through. CML's being targeted. Carlo still going to drop first, but they will at least try and go after the Marcy, and they will look for a bit of a trade, though. CML is able to barely walk away. So they get away with the profit kill, and it costs Execration nothing. It's, it's a nice way to kind of clean up. It's still costly losing Yona in the first place, but it's a good consolation don't for a little fingers. bit of reset. You don't mind too much on Carlo. He's going to have an opportunity to maybe just go for a bottle refill or just some aggression onto the mid lane in general, as again, Abed has started to build up quite nicely on, in terms of his form and is starting to hit that level 6 mark when that is available to come in onto mid, the available to rotate onto those towers for around that infinite mark of itself and Carlos actually just going there. <laughs> Certainly he's bomb is being targeted. Stun is gonna land. Bomb well being locked off. We'll swashbuckle away on the Shanks they go. Shanks able to pick up a shield rune. And we'll be able to walk away with this one. So kind of the perfect rune to, to just walk away freely. So the thing is now that Arbeth's popped the dragon form, you are looking towards the T1 mid tower. Start that chip away. Precious Arbeth, he will have Tim's behind to help out and Shanks we can try to defend the best he wants, but ultimately this tier one tower we're probably gonna lose half his HP. What you'll find He's got the pressure. Abed hits six at the right time. Carlos is got his teleportation. The Bob isn't comfy enough to try to move. He does have level six up, but the connections don't feel clean. Like a Marcy coming in, a Tiny coming in, don't really have the setup to play with. Ravens can try to get something done. Radiance you are getting top some tower space on the offlane, but that's also some space for Raven to try to play catch up now on the Alpha, which is getting the room to do so as well. And we've got room to stack for Tim's in the triangle, and that hasn't been contested. So the, the foundations are Radiant set for Black and Execration. It does feel like the levels still need to come in. You are finding some really early, really good early farm on Yona. I think his timing is going to be like... Manchester, bit cheeky with the boost from the timing. He does get tossed back into the ancient, but he's able to TP. Nice quick thinking here from Carlo. He even have the TP in from Bob, but it's going to amount to absolutely nothing on the Pangolier. It's like he will just move his way into the triangle and just get back to that farming game. Good news though for Execration, I mean Yona is having a, a real fantastic time in, in terms of the farm department on this lane, still top of the net worth board. Right behind though is the Alchemist and, and of course Arbet. Well Arbet going to look back towards that T1 mid tower. Once the map opens up, Blacklist Rivalry can start to look a little bit more aggressive if they so wish. But I, I, I think it's really just all about giving Raven more and more time to just escalate out of control here on this Alchemist. And of course the mid game timing, that 15-20 minute mark is when you've got to start to be very concerned as an execration. The lanes have gone very well for Blacklist. Yeah, I mean, they've got to be able to scout out these stacks. They should know what's happening. They don't have issues in the area. They do manage to at least put a sentry down to try and block one camp, but these resources available is going to be massive, especially with the protection of not having a tier one on mid for Blacklist to yes. have to worry about the TP point here. See a couple rotations here from execration. Will not see him jump in from CML. He does have the toss back onto Arbet. There's going to be an avalanche out as well. Bob trying to get the rolling thunder. Meanwhile, a block there, but Arbet looking to be okay for now. Getting past the tier one tower. He's going to survive as Tim's. He will be the one to drop it in. Comes Gabby. He's trying on to Bob. Bob going to try and swashbuckle away, but Gabby does land the stump, but there's no follow up. Instead, they'll go after CML. It's going to be a one for one trade on the supports. Not too big of a deal for either side. Execration, you could make the argument, maybe got a little bit of more out of that, but you know, at the end of the day, I think Blacklist is still pretty happy as Gabby's looking to go in, does find Bob, and Bob, well, he's caught the nether strike, he'll cop the charge, and Bob is gone. And Gabby, looking to back off now, will be okay as they'll get away with a three pangolier kill. Arbet, in the meantime, trying after Tino, might have to settle for Shanks instead, and Shanks will cop the stun, but there's no more follow up damage yet. They go, CML now teeping back in as Tino trying to go after Arbet. Arbet gonna pop the dragon form, Shanks popping the avalanche as well, but in comes Gabby again with the flash out. Does take down the tiny. Execration is still just trying to find themselves a target. They will try onto the SP, but Gabby, he's just way too fast. 
No Wolf away, and the T1 tower has been lost. They've, they've tried to jump Abba two times in a row now. Like, this DK is just too tanky at this point Radiance in the game. Top Unless Yona can yes. decisively Aha. deliver that Laguna Blade and a couple of uses of the uh, Dragon's Breath and the LSA, it, it doesn't feel like you're going to be finding that kill. Like, there's just not enough right click damage. And they keep trying and trying. Abba's just buying so much space for the response. Radiance the rest middle of his team tower comes in, is under they attack. They manage to get that tier one mid. They just have everything. And execration. I love that Yona realizes what he has to do in this game. Again, he needs to be a little bit more active on that Lina, try to leverage his magical burst. But it's, again, it's just not the right targets that are lining up. He Lagunas a softer target in the side on Tim's him. Abed's just free to do what he wants, just with a double bracer. Just double bracer threats. And this DK feels like it's unkillable. Okay, quite literally is right now. That's kind of the thing. Like, they're trying so hard to stop the T1 mid tower going down like that. And of course, Abed's the main culprit there. But it is still a Dragonite that they could not quite get through. As Blacklist now looking to charge up Bob. Bob gonna cop the charge. Already puts the hand up. The Nether Strike is gonna drag him right back. Bob. He's gonna try and get away, but there's no chance. Rises. This is concerning now. This oh, is getting yeah. very concerning for Execration. Radiance bottom yeah, it's not shaping up. They, it just feels like they have no play. Like Tino is having to sit Dyer's back and farm. Yona wants attack. to be active, but has no real connections to play with. And all the while, you're just free farming here on Raven. You've got these massive stacks built up by Tins. Your triangle is still secure. You're not able to trade on the side of Exit. Nope. <laughs> Three man's time coming up. Neutral. Probably the best play we've seen all game. The most exciting thing to happen in the game, I think, so far. Uh, no backup for that move, however, as you'd expect. But Execration, I mean, it's a rough position. The, the vision game coming out from Blacklist since minute zero has been amazing. We've got good forward vision on triangle, good forward ward up in that top jungle area. They've got a nice avenue to just try and ambush onto the top lane jungle as well. And they're just free to play active. Oh, they found. It's gonna be Yona. You really can't afford to lose this oh, Lina right now, but Yona is just melting to the damage oh. of Arvin. And it's gonna be your position one Lina going down for nothing. No rotations, no counterfight, nothing. Carlo? I mean, maybe they could find a support profit, but not even that. Nah. I mean, you could, but is it really worthwhile just finding the profit in exchange for Pods? Well, not, not in particular. He's got the blink up on Arvin. He can just keep going on to CML, they'll try and put the Marcy and CML trying to run away, but the blink forward is there from Arvid to make sure they finish off the killers. Gabby's looking for the next target. They'll move on to Tino. He does have the curse available. You've got to be somewhat careful to not keep up. Arvid's gonna cop a stun here. He's been perched up to boot. He's a slow, slow boy, but Arvid's still just walking away. Still too tanky. Destruction now from Tim's to buy him more time. They're still trying to set up with the damage. In comes Gabby. He's on the Tino now, the Wyvern in trouble. That is a big time to take down Tino. He'll pop the curse. It's only on one though. It does nothing. Nothing happens here for Execration. They do not get away with the Arbit kill either. They are still grouping up Execration, trying desperately to get something for their time and trouble. They'll go on to Tim's, but Tim's even walking away now. With the Pavis, they've not dealt with him yet. Carlo looking to block the way. Tim's might finally go down, but not yet. The disruption. Still going to save his life. Still walking. Bob will finally take him down, but at what cost? Tino is gone. On to more they go, Arvid moving on to Bob. Bob forced to just walk away. Gabby, oh. for a charge out, has found the Pango once again, and Bob is not looking too healthy, trying to run. The blink forward is there. They'll take down one. They might just find a second. Bob still trying to run. Gabby's got the hand up, and Arvid with a triple. Oh, God. It's oh. surgical, Jonathan. He just hits that timing, gets the blink, gets active top, TP's bot, keeps going, doesn't relent in that aggression. And this is the timing we were looking for from Blackwoods. They're able to play this game, have literally no activity come out from Raven, just have him farm up the triangle stacks that they've built up. You've got to deal with the Alchemist Radiance coming out at a really good timer right now. The BKB is going to be coming up next Radiant as well. And in just this 4v5 scenario, Blacklist already has the upper hand. I think for Execration, it just goes back to a lack of playmaker. Like, you've got that offlane Winter Wyvern. Sure, it can kind of deal with some of the regen, but where are you starting to fight from? Oh, Tino. Tino again being caught out bottom lane, and the aggression really starts. It will pop. He's in. They won't notice. They do back it, he does get away, but scary times. Like, this is when that global strategy you've got with the Blacklist really starts to take over. It's very hard to slow down when they're 6k ahead at 14 minutes in, and 
You know, all the space being bought for this alchemist, it's such a huge Dyer's problem. Bottom tower it's been the huge influx for Raven to again hit that fast timing. For Execration, I, I'm just not sure how you play this. Like, how do you actually initiate? Do you jump in, try to hope for a big curse? Do you try to get a big jump coming out from CML? Do you hope for a blink on Shanks? The blink likely the best timer you're looking at, but considering this game for Shanks, that timing doesn't feel great. He's still about a thousand gold away. And that, that's a hell lot of time where Blacklist can just keep starting every single fight. They've got Dyer's to get some B-Wards down as well. The vision game from Blacklist has just been way too consistent. That top jungle rune ward now a bit further out after the initial D-Ward, not spotted by the sentry. The triangle ward, the ward in front of their tier one, which nets them that nice movement to get the punish on, onto Tino Radiant early on. And you have complete control on Blacklist. They're, they're playing on cruise control Dyer right now. Yeah, it gets even more concerning because now Gabby's got the Shadow Blade up so he can just charge out of nowhere and you just never know when he's coming. You've got the blink up on Raven to boot with the Radiant so now he can join his team if he so wishes. I mean, Yona does pick up the Rod of Atos so he might start to creep up a little bit with his team and try to make some form of a play but Radiant's does feel like you're just stuck trying attack. to counter initiate when the moment kind of offers itself we'll to execration. Apart from that, they just want to keep up the farmers. Now the full clay near up on you. It just doesn't feel like it's anywhere near enough yet to, to really offer what they need. Nah, it, it's a start. It's more control. It's a way to initialize these fights, but... Tino, gonna find out the hard way the shuttle bait was up and Raymond with the blinking. Gonna take down Tino immediately as Shanks. Gonna toss up the Alchemist, but it means nothing. Shanks is just melting to the damage. Yona does move in, but there's just no damage flying out. Now he's in danger. CML, CML is down. Bob, they are still trying onto Raven. Raven might fall eventually, but Yona has gone first. Raven will walk away. Gabby with the hand oh up. Onto God. Bob they go. It's gonna be a full team wipe. Execration. Can they get at least Bob out? They're diving. I don't think they can. Gabby in slow motion. Going after Bob, <laughs> Bob will walk away. What does it matter though? You lost four heroes for nothing. Yeah, it, it's... Gabby? Oh? What are you doing, oh. Gabby? <laughs> okay. Gabby, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite have enough mana to TP home, so I had to go for the reset. <laughs> so as happened, can't really walk up for the mangoes on the fountain, unfortunately. And the side of Blacklist again, it's just complete control. Starting out from the extra creation, that timing... That, that timing with the Glaipir, it's just not enough. Like, you you, you hold them down, sure. You get the Laguna offline, you can't kill them. Nah, you can kill CML. CML? Oh! oh Simcliff! Raven? Nah. Right, we'll just TP away, it's no problem. Even finding a nice neutral item there on the way out. Blacklist yeah. rivalry, I mean, 17 to 6, 10k advantage. You are just sitting pretty right now. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't look that competitive right now, Dyer's coming from tower. the side of Execration. Again, in this fight, they all mass teleport in. They try to get that control with Yona. He gets a Laguna off onto Abed, but what are you going to do about that? Where's the follow-up? It did no damage. It does nothing. It literally did nothing. Like yeah. they've, they've got to be able to find the back line. Like, Carlo is a decent target. You know, literally anyone but Abed. Heck, even Raven, at this point, pre-BKB, is a target that you could try to force yourself onto, but none of it are the targets presenting themselves. It's just Abed running forward, not a care in the world, blinking up front. Yeah, he's a DK, and you don't have that straightforward answer here for a DK. You absolutely do not. The creation up that top lane do need to be somewhat careful because it seems as though Blacklist want to group up and start to move up towards the north again. They'll get the blink up on their tiny at least. So you do bit of, have a bit of blink toss plays here from Shanks now available for, for execration. I don't need any little pick up that they can get. And Blacklist going to take the time to sit back and relax now at the 18 minute mark. 11k ahead, and of course with an alchemist, you only are set to escalate even quicker. Dyer's middle tower is under uh, Or Blacklist, no rush here. Going to slowly move through the bottom lane, looking for that tier 2 tower. And well, why the hell not? It's, uh, it's going to be an easy one by the looks of it as execration. And they are grouped up, they are looking ready to go for maybe a smoke attempt and they will pop one. But how do you take the fight? Like you may be looking for a great toss back on an easy target here for Blacklist to get things started. That's that's your best option. Try to go for the burst play with Avalanche toss back and have Yona just be a little bit more far forward. Maybe more than you'd feel safe, but you've got to take some risks when you're just far behind. Blacklist going out with their own smoke. Down a smoke situation, Blacklist for an opportunity of their own, they might 
move right into execration though as they do in fact Gabby getting a double charge out has found Yona already the leaner in pretty big trouble Yona just melting to the damage of Arben Arben still trying they will at least call and embrace the same Yona for now curse is out Arben causing so much trouble they've lost Gabby though maybe they can take down the Dragon Knight Arben Ooh. finally goes down but they do lose Yona in return as now Shanks dropping quite low himself Raven's a huge problem can they deal with the act to boot maybe they can Raven will pop the ult He'll try to survive, but he's dropping rather low. In comes the tiny once again, but the TP is just taking forever. Oh. Raven, BKB it up, trying to run. Bob on the chase, the flick oh away. Oh my god. He's fine. He will make it another day. That was not a bad fight for Execration, though. No, definitely not. They forced the first BKB usage out from Raven. It was a very split apart fight. It, they were delayed on killing off Gabby. They've got to find a way to deal with that Shabby Demon in back. But in the, in the end, it works out. It does cost them a couple attack. of buybacks on execration, but you need to take what you can get right now when you're this far behind. You are seeing some of that damage start to kick in, like with that defusal up for Bob. We'll cancel off the charge here through the bottom lane again, but it seems as though Blacklist are, uh, are not too interested in, in trying to force this fight, especially with the BKBs on cooldown. They'll wait for another day. I, I wonder if Blacklist are at all worried after that last engagement. Like, it was a bit too close for comfort here up against Execration. And, you know, Execration showing, si showing signs of life now is uh, fantastic for us at the very least, Jonathan, because it looks like the game might get a lot closer. But for, for Blacklist rivalry, not so much. Yeah, I mean, again, this fight was a really good target to go for, a really great glint reveal coming out from Shanks. Just stalled out a little bit too much by the disruption from the Shadow Demon. They've got to be able to take care of those saving supports, really take care of Tim's. Because one good disruption, you lose that burst window. That's what your lineup's about when you're kind of running this Lena plus Tiny. They're just lucky to melt one here down ASAP. You manage to get the shard going on Shanks, which probably isn't the best support here to have the shard on. But it's useful, I guess, in just shoving out waves, trying to siege if they can get themselves into a position where they can start to contest these tier one towers. You can maybe start to even consider Roshan in that down line, although it does seem to be a lot easier for Blacklist off the back of the fight. Radiant's They'll go out for a smoke. They've got the Manta style up on Abed. So even more tools to save here. Yeah, Shanks does get caught out immediately. Abed just trying to take full priority here with the Manta style and even looking for the body blocks on Shanks. Toss away though from Shanks, but Radiant's it seems as though he should be awesome. as good as dead. Carlo will secure the kill. Raven in the meantime looking to cut them off. They found Yona. They've got the Lena controlled up. Gabby just perma bashing the Lena. As in comes Abed now. It's just no way out for Yona. He's trying so hard to get away, but there's just no gameplay. They'll yeah. just lock him down forever. CML also getting caught by Raven. That'll be a double for the Alk. And up north they go. They want more. Gabby's found another target. It's going to be Tino. He'll try for the TP, but it's no good. No, it is no good. A triple kill for Raven. That is, that is dirty as all hell. That, that, the back-to-back -back bashes into the shield bash is... Uh, it doesn't feel good right now for Yona, and with all of those deaths, that little momentum execration found from those kills earlier on, they're going to lose a lot. Mid-tier 2 is being sieged, top is being shoved in as well. You've got this Alchemist now who's about 4k above any next hero, 7k above the next dire side hero. So you just don't have the tools to match up against that Alk unless you get that same situation where you can just get the chain stuns off and funnel Blacklist then one by one. You do have some really good high ground here on the side of Execration at least. The threat of Winter's Curse can probably buy you some time here. Maybe force Blacklist to consider waiting for that Roshan, that first Roshan, oh. and when they're confident for it. But with this kind of lead, with a 98% chance to win for Blacklist, Things are looking dire for the dire side execration. Oh, no kidding, Jonathan. It's looking pretty rough here. I mean, it's certainly not out of it quite yet, but Blacklist looked like that. Pretty easy path to that high ground rather soon. Maybe just wait for Arbet to have the Ags up here on the Dragon Knight and make it especially hard. Because he even got the Dragon Skull as a tier 2 item. So it's just, ah. they, these towers have just been absolutely melting here with the DK. I mean, you, you are getting to a point where Execration are looking to fight back. Like you've got Tina with his own Aghanim Scepter being built up now, but perhaps that could be a, a game changer here for, for Execration on the high ground. The question is, will he have it in time? It's still two parts away, around 2,000 gold to go. And I feel like Ags. It's a big jump up. It's not enough to turn the tide, right? Like, uh, he has the Mage Slayer up. You kind of want more. You want more attack speed. You want more mana to sustain that usage of Arctic Burn. 
that could be the way they scale, as I think the way they're playing their arena right now for Yona, again, is much more tempo. But it's gonna be it's gonna need a lot of time to compensate for this deficit. And as time goes on, you know, this alchemist is just getting bigger and bigger. It's uh it's compounding every single time because it's just so much faster for Alk to hit his own item timings. We could even reach a point if he tried to stall this game out, you know, Raven could just start gifting Axe. Three Axe for Abed down the line, although it looks like he might be farming one of his own, but a freebie Alliance on the DK free. leaving up an opening for say more attacks Radiant with your armor on DK can be massive. Or even just a free axe on, say, something like the NP. Like, the scaling of Blacklist w is still impressive with the Alk. Like, the Alk will plateau, but the Ags upgrades they have is massive. It certainly is. The Blacklist driver hanging around that top side of the map. It seems like Execration will do a, a good job of just avoiding them all together. 19k advantage now for the Radiant and the Thing. Yona does pick up his Lincoln Spear, so a bit more defense coming out for that leader. Another Lincoln now being built up does be picked up on Bob rather. Roshan gonna get started here by the looks of it. Blacklist Driver is trying for every objective they can get. And Execration, I mean, they are around the twin gates of the bottom side, they, so they could think about a fight if they, if they do go through the gates. But instead, it seems as though they just wanted the tier one bottom tower. Do they actually go for it? I mean, they do have time, but they are not looking to move it. Radiance middle tower. It's, under yeah, it's not the fastest rush in the world. Could have been something they contested again with Winter's Curse by a pretty appealing way to try to work it back there. The issue is their lanes aren't really shoved in their favor. The top lane in particular needs a hard access at Roche. And they are kind of trying to hunt elsewhere. So freebie Age is coming up for Raven. Does have a full AC up as well on top, going for the Basher next. It's going to be a lot harder to try to burst down unless they can leverage off this magic damage on Execration's side. Let's see if they manage to get that decision right. It does, it does feel like for a lot of these fights, it's been down to who, who manages to find the vulnerable target first. When Execration manages to, say, find a softer target or catch Raven off guard before his BKB can fly on, he is still somewhat manageable with the chain stunts and with a burst, as long as he's not in his ult with a BKB. So it's a little bit tougher to kind of get that done with the full AC up. You've got the full Ags up being bought out by Carlo himself. And that entangle on the Matrix Curse, it, it's pretty painful. Especially, again, considering how well the vision game is coming out here from Carlo. He has some really good angle to just snipe someone if they're not careful. You've also got the axe here on, uh, on Arbid now as well, so the Black Dragon is available. And that's uh, equally scary here if you are Execration. As Blacklist Rivalry immediately trying to group up now. Starting to take over that map again and maybe look towards the high ground. Look towards that bottom tier 2 tower first. Of course, the last outer tower available now for Execration. Dyer's bottom tower be no problems here for Raven to take care of. With the Aegis up, I mean, you still got three, 3 minutes 40 seconds just moving to that high ground if you want. Blacklist do not need to rush this, but with the timings of these uh, these power spikes that they've got now available on their heroes, it seems as, they, they, it seems as though they want to go. I, I don't think you have much to wait for. I mean, he's got Black Dragon form, got that stun Stun out, he's found the tiny. There's no follow up to him. Just a warning shot, just to turn out maybe that initiation on the side. Execration won't kick in. They are oh, getting no, the no. elsewhere. Yeah, certainly so. It seems like they found Bob here on the pink lead. Bob got to find Dying a way out. So much damage flying in between Gabby and Carlo. Bob forced to pop the rolling thunder and just roll away. Thing is, though, you're not going to have that available now for the high ground defense. So even though Bob seems like he won out that uh, that engagement, truth be told, he's, he's got no uh, no ulti available now. If your black you can start to really try and pressure that high ground. We've got the DK illusions as well with disruption in the Manta. That slow poke and prodding has led to half the HP of the tier 3 just going away without any real commitment from Blacklist. Like, it, Abed's just so confident that he knows he can jump in like that without being punished severely. And it just, it, it just makes the game that much harder for Execration. I like the understanding from Blacklist. They know they can't commit fully for a big clump up because of the threat of Luther's Curse. But nothing's going to be stopping these illusions just slowly poking in whenever they got that Black Dragon form available. We saw a line being drawn out by Arbet as well. He was just kind of drawing on the map, saying to his team, listen, they cannot leave this area. They are stuck in their base. Do not let them get past this line. And that's kind of exactly what's happening. Execration are just stuck on their high ground right now, prepping for a defense. But it's really just never going to come. You, again, you've got an alchemist, you've got a DK. You're more than happy to sit back, relax, and just keep, keep, keep hitting creeps. And... Well, execration. 
really no play out of this, it seems like. I mean, you could try to force the smoke, but you don't want to do that into the ages. You know you're very, very far behind, and probably the best chance you have in this game is to wait for Blacklist to try and go for the high ground attempt. That, that, that feels like the safest play for sure. They, they don't even have vision out. Like, I think that's one thing that they can take. Their wards right now are solely focused on that bot lane. They are getting some info to the slow Pokemon prod. And Blacklist looks like they will slow the commit. They force out the fortify. Really good use of the illusions just again scout out for the DK with the flying movement out. The angles are tougher for Blacklist. They've got one, the Alchemist. He does have a secondary life, but Raven may lose his first life immediately, and he's gone. That is the Aegis down. In comes Gabby charging up to Yona, but now he's been trapped up. Gabby may go down as well, looking pretty darn okay. low. He is gone. All right, that is a nice high ground defense to come here from Execration. And Blacklist, they have no choice but to retreat. I'm really curious as to why they decided to just go down. I mean, they don't really lose much. Gabby dying can be pretty big for Execration and trying to bounce again. back here. Yeah, I've been just thinking about it. Stun out, they do find CML, but there is a lot of heroes around. Execration might be interested in the fight. CML's still alive. They're gonna find Carlo. The Prophet being locked down. Arbet's been spotted to boot. This could be the team fight. Execration, they found one. Arbet now trapped between a rock and a hard place. They'll try to survive him, but it looks like he's good as dead. Arbet just cannot get away. He is down. Oh man. And Execration really starting to fight back as tens. Would at least TP away. But Execration finding three for nothing. And these high ground defenses, like you look at them, they're worth craft on. It went from 20k to 12k. Yeah, it's starting to swing really hard. Again, it's this commitment from Blacklist that kind of causes that. Right? They come in with the illusions of the DK scouting the back line, but putting so much pressure on Gabby, maybe feeling confident to charge that far in without the backup of Raven. It, it costs them big time on Blacklist and Execration. You're starting to see that damage kick in with, with the Witch played up on Tino with, again, his Ags and Mage Slayer. With how far he can stand in these fights, he is fairly well protected, especially if Gabby's charging someone else first. It tends to be CML nowadays or Shanks that kind of cops a short end of the stick there. It's important for Gabby to keep that charge on the course, but with the Lincolns to protect, that easy initiation you were Radiance looking for from Blacklist is, is under harder to execute, right? Like, charge is going to be something that you can't rely on. Uh, blink, uh, shield bash is not something you can rely on as well. You need to kind of pop it first. And that it, that feels like one big difference maker for Execration to react. You've got a window for Yona to play. You've got a window for Bob to play. And that has made all the difference here. Absolutely. As Blackfist, I mean, they're going to go for a smoke. They're going to try something again. Towards the north, lines have been drawn out. They've got an Abyssal Blade now on Raven. It seems like Execration. Not really looking for this fight. I mean, this is outside of their base, so it's not quite like the last team fight we just saw. Things coming out towards the top lane. Seems like they have spotted out one, and it is going to be Bob again. Bob going to try for the watcher. Does take it, but now Gabby's right behind him. They'll entangle him up. Bob could not get the wrong oh. thunder up in time, and Bob is oh. gone. That's a huge kill for Blacklist rivalry. And so Bob just always at this top lane. A really good smoke out there from the side of Blacklist as well to kind of get that ambush position in and set themselves up. It's a little bit too late for Roshan. Like it, it's not close enough to kind of consider that aspect just yet. Uh, the respawn isn't that long for Bob, but you, you managed to get some space to keep the shove out on the lanes. You're still building up this really nice net worth lead. It just becomes complicated on, on the high ground. Blacklist's best bet is something like you mentioned about it. Play with these Dragonite illusions, get the get the disruption illusions going, get the mantle. Oh, Gabby, oh, Gabby, cute. he's going deep, the curse is out, he's locked down. Quick reactions coming in, now stunning them up, both of them Raven trying to move in. Gabby though dropping solo and now the cold embrace, Yo. keeping him alive. Carlo, Carlo's gone and so is Gabby. Raven going right by the bounce and taking down Yona, but can he survive himself? Arbit's going to move in and try and save the day. They're onto the Wyvern, but the stun's coming up from Bob, is not allowing it. Now the oh, toss in, on the fountain. Arbet trying to get his way out, but it is looking as good as dead as here is Arbet trying no to keep me away, oh, but he is oh, gone. Oh boy. Blacklist rivalry, oh, they are getting very, very confident, but it is not paying off. It's these charges. Like, charging <laughs> oh. into the back like that. Sure, I, I, I understand why. Again, it, you have Lincolns to deal with, and that's the one here, one of the few heroes without the Lincolns that you can fully commit onto. Oh, but to, to charge into a Winter Wyvern and to also teleportation in yeah. to get a good Winter's Curse off, 
they have to respect that. They, they really have to respect this Winter Wyvern. They have to understand the positioning that they have to take here on Blacklist. Execration, hang on. They got a, a big kill that they probably shouldn't have been able to find, but a really great toss back from Shanks. And really good use of just the flying movement again that the Winter Wyvern has with the Ags. And they get to drag this game out. You still have a considerable lead on the side of Blacklist, but a big chunk of that is on Raven. And you know what, as an alchemist, at some point, this network lead isn't a realistic measure of just how much this hero can do for you. Yeah, Gabby's going to stop charging everybody, oh, I think. Just, if they're in the base, just leave them alone. These cold embraces have been absolutely fantastic from Tina. Just look at the time he buys here for CML. Like, you might not think much of it, but it allows the rest of the team to just focus on these bigger targets. And you see Raven, I mean, they try to save with Arbit, but then Arbit ends up beating his own life away. And that is just <laughs> not what you want to see if you are the Dragon Knight. It's the fountain, obviously, the kind of the king of damage when it comes to uh, comes to this game, and Arbit had to find out the hard way. Yeah, it's a uh, really, really good patience and positioning out from Execration there. Carlo, getting caught here by the tiny. Shanks, very, very good with these blinks in. Brad is out. Carlo looking for a TP away, but the toss up is actually going to reach. And well, with that, Carlo is as good as down. 27 to 15 now, 13k advantage. Still the way of Blacklist rivalry, but. They're, they're kind of just banging their heads against the wall here. Yeah, the high ground's just been a tough nut to crack for them. And again, they, they have this really easy solution to play patient. I understand why they might feel the need to rush. Again, Alchemist is... Oh boy. It can scale. It, it still scales to an extent, but it does slow down a bit. Execration, looking for that smoke play. Yeah. They've got confirmation. They've got some good pings as to where it might be hanging. If they get a good jump here, I mean, this looks like a prime curse location right now for Tino. It certainly does. Arbet, he's going to break the smoke, blink away onto Shanks. Raven, in the meantime, has been caught out. Gets the BKB away, though, onto Yona. They go. Yona going to force half ways down. The curse is going to lock down the Alchemist. They're just trying to drag out the BKB duration. Now it's gone. Raven's a bit of a sitting duck. They're trying to save with the disruption. In comes Gabby with a massive charge. Meanwhile, Arbet in the backside trying to go onto the tiny, but they've lost CML for now raven he is still alive still able to back off as yona's the one being targeted yona losing half his hp gabby he'll charge in once again who are they targeting now it seems as though they will find nobody as shanks is brought back but they will retreat on the side of execration so only really one going down roshan is available though so execration may need to make their way back around to the top lane and try to try to counter out that roshan attempt here from blacklist it's going to be a lot tougher without access to Winter's Curse for a few seconds. You've got to risk it without the Marcy as well. If CML does fall up front, you've got the damage this time on Blacklist to kind of to, to kind of get this rush on a little bit quicker. So again, not the fastest in the world, but certainly fast enough that there's no time to respond here for execration. Exa, just about kind of sitting back, trying to w wait for these cooldowns. They did force the fight under Vision side of Blacklist as the smoke broke, so they had a lot of opportunities to just play, and they couldn't get that backline jump you need. And they get a decent jump onto Raven, but the save still being there on Tim's does complicate the entire process for Exa. It's kind of the same thing for Blacklist. Right? If, you're, if you on Blacklist have issues with Tino and the Winter Wyvern and the Cold Embrace, Execration are having a, half, a hard time dealing with that dis disruption and the saves that Tim's has been providing in the middle of these jumps. So. Someone's got to find these backline saves to simplify these fights. The damage is starting to scale up. Daedalus being queued up here on Yona on his Lina. And the machine gun damage starts to kick into full gear at that point. And again, the scaling, even like a hero like Marcy on CML, sure it is Marcy's not the richest in the world. Once it, once it has levels, it's just really annoying in the front. And it can sustain, like a BKB on Marcy, even as a support, if that's something CML can work onto, Suddenly you have basically an additional core and execration that you have to contend with. So this 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 timing for Blacklist as we reach 38 minutes in, it it gets a little bit scary. It's not as straightforward, it's not as easy to pierce the high ground. It's not as easy to say as well that you've got the tools to just beat out X in a long game, because you don't. You're dealing with late game Wyvern, you're dealing with late game just support Marcy scaling up, Alina as well that can start to get a lot more going in terms of right click damage. It, it, it's complicated. I mean, it's very complicated, and this is a game that Blacklist with 98% chance had a chance of winning, that Radiant is, with this game number one, but it certainly does not feel that way anymore. Execration doing fantastic work here on these high ground defenses, and 
and they just continue to stick around the base. They know they don't have to rush. They don't have to fight into the Aegis Cheese. They can just wait for Blacklist to do it themselves. And they may just very, very soon, because you've got the Swift Blink now up on Raven, so perhaps it's about time to group up and go again. But you, you, lose, you keep losing these team fights, and it just keeps getting worse and worse if you are the Radiant. Blacklist will group up in that die trying or they'll hang around. They'll throw the illusions here from Arbit into that tier three tower, rather the rats. That Rain Rex, even with just the illusions, is going to melt. This is one way to play. I mean, you just slowly but surely, the you can just chip away at these rats. And this is the way we saw Blacklist play earlier on the high ground anyway. It eventually leads to just having that, having the racks fall down. It is, again, a slower process, but there's so much stuff. Just disruption to Manta. It, it, you don't need to take that risk. It's down to forcing Execration to be the one to look for something outside to try to, you know, as we've seen from Blacklist, just drive them into their location. Blacklist still has really good vision. They've still got that good board on the triangle. They're maintaining that board in the top jungle. Whereas for Exa, it's all laning wars. They, their map is so dark, they need some forward boards just to watch if anyone's trying to shove in the lane onto the high ground. It's getting even more scary now. He gets this tiny, especially because he's got that level 20 talent, so Toss requires no target, and that is... Uh, with a player like Shanks, who has been making some big plays here on the high ground defenses with these tossbacks, it could be a big problem for Blacklist. Uh, they are still patiently waiting by that triangle, hoping that someone from Execration does move out of the base, but everyone's just chilling. They are more than happy to just sit back and relax. Uh, I bet I suppose could just wait for the next Dragon form and pop that with the Mantu Illusions once again. He does have it available if he so wishes. It seems though he will use that. So he's just going to pop the Dragon form, maybe oh, use the Mantu and... Go, go again the slow, but the, the same for yep. Slow and steady wins the race. Blacklist understands. Raven. Now this is too safe. He's jumped in on Yona. Yona gonna be okay uh, for now. Raven actually the big target. About uh, to lose the Aegis once again. He pumps the BKB in the first life. He's still going after CML. He'll find one. Yona dropping low. Carlo in the meantime. He's gonna go down and now Raven. Has no BKB available, oh, so Shanks yes. can jump in. They've got the Artemis locked down for now. Disruption will save. It'll find a bit more time. Raven, he'll heal up. They'll move back on as Shanks with the Avalanche and the Curse now coming out. It'll lock down two of them. Gabby in trouble to boot. They'll lose both lose half HP. Is Raven still holding on to that Aegis? That oh, first life really? taken away. Really? Still alive somehow. Tino, he Isn't finally gets the damage away. It's Bob. So Bob does go so down, but he's got buyback available. Does pop it. Arbit still going. In comes Carla with his buyback. In goes Gabby on the hit four towers. Though Gabby needs to be saved by Tim's. Does get the disruption, but can they deal with it? They're on a shanks instead. Gabby in the meantime able to barely walk away. Nether strikes back in on a Bob. Trying to go for the tieback. What a giga chat play from Gabby. And it does pay off. Bob is gone. That's a dieback on the Pangolier. Raven in the meantime, oh. fighting Tino, takes ah. down the Wyvern. It's only one versus five left. Yon is the only person that can try to make the comeback, but he is gone. Blacklist rivalry. They will taunt it with the disruption. GG's been called. Blacklist eventually get it done for game number one. An execration, I mean, it was a, a decent chance of a comeback during game one, but not quite. I, it, it was an excellent start for Blacklist. Saw Execration hold onto the high ground really nicely this time around, but they they get a little bit impatient, right? Like it, it's just.